Hey guys, welcome to Appalachia's Homestead. Patera with you today. I had not planned on taking you through the candling process of these babies. We did day eight because a lot of folks like to see different things. And we got up today, 13, 14 or so, we had a major ice storm. So instead of candling, the focus was to just get through the, the ice storm and to make sure the eggs were turned, et cetera, et cetera. Well, the power went out, and we lost power for about six to seven hours, which in the scheme of things is not that bad, but when you're incubating eggs, that's not the best case scenario. I knew the power was going to be going out more than likely. If you watch my bread baking, my off-grid bread baking video part two, I just uploaded this past week, where I baked bread on the wood stove, um, I talked about us losing power. Well, Prior to us losing power, but thinking that we very likely could because we're so used to things like that, I wrapped the incubator that you're seeing right here with three towels. When the power finally came on in the middle of the night, I ran to the kitchen and it went back to the correct, for me, in terms of my incubator, 38 degrees Celsius. So I think wrapping the incubator with three heavy towels I am hoping helped these babies. We are now, as of tonight, not today, but as of tonight, I'm entering day 18. If you candle eggs, the last potential day for you to candle them is day 17 because you're about to enter the lockdown period where you don't touch the eggs, you don't turn the eggs, you do not candle the eggs. So... I've decided to take you along on this hatching process this week because I want to see if they hatch. So we're going to find out how they're doing in terms of candling. So we're on day 17 and a half approximately. And let's hope we have we can see some positive things in here. Um, if, if all of these hatch, I'm going to be ecstatic. Um, if half hatch, I'm going to be thankful. And if none hatch, I'm not going to be surprised. So let's see how we rock and roll. But before I do that, I want to take just a quick minute and give a loud shout out to my buddy Colton out there. Colton is a big fan and he watches all of our videos. And he wrote in this week, he and his mama wrote in this week to tell me and to ask me if they could name, they have a new little goat, a kid, and it's a little doe and they want to name it Patera. And I said, you better believe it. I am honored. So, Colton, we appreciate you watching us here at Appalachia's Homestead, and we hope you keep learning and homesteading, and we're just proud to call you our friend, so I hope you enjoy that. All right, guys, we're going to candle real quick because we've got the top off, okay? So let's just get rolling. I'm just going to start going, okay? I'm going to pick an egg and go. Let's pray for these babies. And, yes, I pray for these babies. All right. Okay, so we have... Uh, very light at the bottom. I do not see a blood ring at this time. That's a positive sign. I'm not going to... And it is moving. Can you see that? I don't know if you can, but the baby is moving in the egg. So I'm going to go quick. We got good, good news on that. Now, again, I still have three more days, two to three more days potentially. Let's pray it works. All right, so don't see a bloodline. Now, when I get these darker eggs, guys, I, you know, it's hard to see in general. So far, it's the same thing I'm seeing here. It's just a darker egg. You've got the uh, uh, a clear, distinct um, egg sac here at the air sac in the egg at the bottom. And it looks, it looks healthy to me so far. Um, in fact, I'm almost believing if I sit still long enough, I think I may even be seeing a little bit of movement. So what I did, the power, like I said on my video, we the power kept flickering. We had a bunch of ice. And um, now this egg is dark. So, and it's fully engulfed. So I'm, you know, it, that's not abnormal at this point. So there is development at a minimum. So I'm going to keep moving. Um, if I'm moving too fast, let me know. Um, I just, I panicked. I thought, we're going to lose power. And here I am, you know, day 13, 14 on these eggs, which is pretty far in, guys. So I wrapped the incubator. I thought at least I'm hoping it'll maintain uh, some humidity and temperature within, the, the temperature particularly within. Uh, I'll be doggone. That baby is moving in there. So far, so good, guys. I mean, it's still we're, we're still waiting to see. This is a green egg, green eggs and ham. I love these Easter eggers, y'all. We have a lot of Easter egger mixes out there, and they are just great. Okay, here we go. 
Everything so far is looking very good. I think wrapping this intensely may have really saved these babies. Now, I have had the power go off once before, uh, earlier in a process, and it made me nervous, but it was, um, I did, and I did not know how long exactly, but it was only for maybe an hour or two because I had left the house and come back and had found um, that the power had been out, and um, I didn't have any issues. But this long and that far development, you just never know. I mean, guys, it's, it's, you just never know, okay? You just got to keep pressing forward. Uh, so we have an air sac. Clearly, we have development. There is no blood ring on this either. Um, you can see oh, that. Wait, I don't know if you can see. I know it's darker, but it looks like there is a baby moving in there. I know it is. I see it. All right. What? How many eggs we've got so far? Six of the ten. My incubator is the magic fly. I was just talking to Miss Homestead Lady today. She is going to probably um, purchase one of these, um, a small incubator to have for her small kids, you know, to incubate some eggs from time to time. It's so great when you can incubate your own eggs. She's so much healthier on your farm. Um, just a really good thing. Education, too. Um, so if I am seeing... I am so happy. So far, uh, you know, that doesn't mean I'm going to have a good 100% a hatch rate, but... I haven't seen anything standing out yet. Okay, I can see the difference between the air sac and the line, and then there's clearly where the embryo is. Oh, this is so good. Let's, let's pray for this. Last two, last two. Okay, I've got a Moran egg here. You're probably not going to see much. I'm just going to tell you right now. I can just faintly see an air sac on that. If you candle eggs, um, like I've told, oh, there it is. There's the air sac. If, um, if you candle eggs, it's just a known fact, regardless of how you're doing it, um, the darker the egg, the more difficult it is for you to see anything in terms of development, um, if there is development, because it's just so dark. All right, last one. I know I'm moving fast, y'all. If it's going back and forth, I'm sorry. Okay, let's see. Where are we at here, baby? All right. This is a light. Okay. Three of these eggs are believed, I know for two for a fact, are lavender Orpington crosses, or they could be a full bred lavender Orpington. I think it's in look, this one's looking okay too. All right, guys. So I'm going to put them back in here and I'm going to turn them. The opposite side that they were, I'm pretty sure it was X's up, wasn't it? I'll verify with the video. <laughs> um, so I will not turn these eggs anymore. In fact, actually, watch what I do here. What I'm technically supposed to do is take this out. Okay? That's from the eggs and a little bit of whatever. You're actually going to put this in there without the styrofoam, okay? Because when they start hatching, you don't want them on the styrofoam. Okay, because I could start having babies hatch. Um, I've had babies hatch, is that, you know, starting with a day 18, pipping and whatnot. All right, guys, so we're going to put these back, get them back under the heat. I'm going to verify that my side is correct. I'm pretty sure that I need to be the O side up. If not, we'll turn it when the, the video is off. We appreciate y'all watching. We will let you know in the next couple of days what we have going on with these babies. I'm hoping for 10 for 10 here, guys. I really, really am. I've been nervous all week about it. And just pretty much turned them and left them alone. We appreciate y'all watching us here at Appalachia's Homestead. If you like what you see, be sure to like and subscribe. Check us out on Facebook and Instagram and Pinterest. And guys, I'm going to say it, it dates the video. But you got the great Appalachian Homesteading Conference coming up in six weeks. You don't want to miss that. We're going to talk about chickens and cast iron and, and organic gardening and all kinds of cool stuff all day long over there in Crossville, Tennessee. So be sure to come out and visit. Y'all take care. We'll talk to you soon. And again, Colton, we love you out there. Y'all take care.